Let's talk about sketching graphs of polar curves. Now, if you really get into this, there's all sorts of tricks and tips and ways you can learn about the curve before you get in there and start doing it. However, since we're just trying to do a brief introduction to polar here, we're not going to go into all that level of detail. The simplest way to graph a polar curve is kind of like when you were first learning how to graph a function in early algebra. And in fact, we just did it recently in terms of the parametric. We can just go ahead and find a bunch of points, plot those points, and connect the dots. So here, what we're saying is that if we plug in a theta, we get an r. I always like to start with my quadrantal angles. So if theta is equal to 0, we get 2 minus 2 times 1, because cosine of 0 is 1, so we get a radius of 0. At pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so this is 2. At pi, cosine is negative 1, so we get a 4. And at 3 pi over 2, cosine is 0, so we're back down to a 2. Now, certainly, those points are useful. Knowing that, let's go... Well, anytime we've got a radius of 0, it doesn't matter what the angle is, we've got 0. At pi over 2, we're going out 2. At pi, we're going out 4. And at 3 pi over 2, we're going out 2. But honestly, that's not enough to see what the graph is doing. It's a good idea to get some points in between. So I'm going to go ahead and let's do every halfway through every quadrant here. So let's do pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So 2 minus root 2. If I put in 3 pi over 4, I'm going to get a negative root 2 over 2. So I get a 2 plus root 2. At 5 pi over 4, I also get a 2 plus root 2. And at 7 pi over 4, I get a 2 minus root 2. I'm just doing a really quick thing, because I am not don't have a really accurate graph here anyway. 2 minus root 2, if we say root 2 is about 1.4, so this will be about 0 0.6. And this will be about 3.4. So, at an angle of pi over 4, we're only going out 0.6. So we're somewhere around there. 7 pi over 4, we're somewhere around there. But up here, we're going out 1, 2, 3.4 is somewhere around there. And now we start to see what this thing looks like. It comes around there. and does something like that. If you look at this thing on its side, the graph looks a lot like a heart. And so, again, one of those things that you would learn if you spent a lot of time doing this, this graph is called a cardioid for that reason. Okay, let's try another one, same kind of thing. Now, because of that 3 theta, though, we've got to be a little bit careful with what's going on. And so I'm actually going to be putting in more points than I did. I'll go ahead. I'll still start with the quadrantal angles, though. At 0, sine of 0 is 0. At pi over 2... The sine of 3 pi over 2 is a negative 1, so that becomes a negative 3. 
at pi I get 0 and at 3 pi over 2 I get 9 pi over 2 which is the same thing as pi over 2 which would be 3. However, that's really not enough right there. So, let's go ahead and because I've got this 3 theta in there, what happens if I put in pi over 6? Pi over 6 gives me a times 3 is pi over 2, so that would come out to be a 3. If I put in pi over 3, 3 times pi over 3 is pi, and sine of pi is 0. And honestly, we should really just draw a whole lot more points. But you get the idea. So what happens here? Well, let me focus on the ones that are kind of in the first quadrant. Let's focus on that one, that one, that one, and that one for right now. At 0, we get 0, so we're going through the origin. Then at pi over 6, we're going out 3. So we're around right there. But then, when we get to pi over 3, we're back to 0. What we're doing is we're kind of going out and then coming back like that. And then, what happens is the actual thing starts going negative. At pi over 2, we're down to here. This thing kind of curves around down like that and then comes back up and then it's going to have another petal over like that. And these should all be the same size. I'm just not very good at drawing it. And there we go. Just by plotting points you can see what the graph looks like. This kind of curve is called a rose curve. And again, there's all sorts of tricks to knowing what they look like if you start studying them. But honestly, just plotting points, you'll get there. You just might have to do a little bit more work than if you knew some tricks.